G'day, Scott here from Scott's Hobbies. Today I'm going to show you how I make my hatchet scary sharp. I have a lovely plum hatchet here, I hope you can read that. Made in the USA. And it has this lovely beautiful hickory handle with a nice boiled linseed oil finish that's built up over the years and it feels absolutely lovely in the hand. But it has been away in the cupboard for a while, I haven't used it for a while, and a few years actually, and it needs a good sharpen. It's got this annoying little chip up here, which was from me probably doing something silly with it when I didn't appreciate it as much. But now I'm going to show you one way to sharpen your hatchet, get it nice and scary sharp. I'll show you the setup. Alright, so here's my setup. I've got the hatchet clamped to a board on a sawhorse. I have a whole bunch of strips of sandpaper cut all the way from 120 grit up to 2000 grit. I've got a little stool to sit on. You've got to make sure you do this at a comfortable height, otherwise you end up uh, kind of rushing and then not getting the angle right and all that kind of stuff and it can be kind of unsafe to be rushing while you you know got your hand near a sharp blade and then I've got this bit of scrap wood it's about a foot long and I've double sided taped one of those strips to it and I'm going to use that kind of in a draw filing motion along the bevel you can also if you have them and want to use them this is an old easy lap 1x6 stone with the fish hook groove in it you can use one of them you can use the edge pro type stones if you want um, but you just got to make sure they're flat and yeah now I'll show you what I'll start doing alright so the idea is that we place the sandpaper on here and we scrub it back and forth along the bevel And this will take a while, especially for the first um, the first grit, and you'll probably go through a few bits of sandpaper. As you can see, it's kind of clogging up a little bit, but I'll move along the sandpaper and use different parts of it, and keep going until this side is all got 120 grit scratches all over the bevel, and you've apexed the edge by getting a burr to go over to the other side. You'll feel it once you get there. <laughs> okay, as you can see it's getting there but my bit of sandpaper's kind of clogged up and lost its, well, that initial bite it gets, you want to replace it fairly regularly otherwise it just takes way too long which is why a small diamond stone or something could work great too because you don't have to replace it but this is if you don't have that kind of sharpening equipment the good thing about this cloth backed stuff is it doesn't stick on the tape super hard and you can just reuse it and place another one on when you get to the paper though, it kind of sticks to it a bit better and won't come off as easy, so you often have to replace the tape a few times. So, yeah, now if you ever have to get up, make sure you unclamp it because you've got kind of a half sharpened blade sticking out. You don't want anyone to walk past and get their leg on it, or more than likely I'd get my own leg on it. So, yeah, just put on a podcast or listen to some music and relax while you're sharpening your axe. It's quite uh, mesmerizing I find, quite meditative. Alright, back to it. Okay, I've done the first side up to 120 grit. I haven't bothered taking all the chips out just because you know there's a lot of steel to come off. I'd rather just have it come out over time especially now that I'm going to look after the axe. Um, there's the other side. I don't know if you can see it. 
don't think you can, but there's actually a burr the whole way along. Oh, there we are, the light hit it a bit. It's actually a burr the whole way along. So now we're going to do this side up to 120 grit and get the burr on the other side, get this all polished up, and he deep scratches out so it looks pretty. And then, yeah, I'll come back and show you the once I start on the next one. Okay, both sides are done to 120 grit. There's a nice burr on that side. And now I'm going to start on 240 grit. I'll be back to show you what that looks like shortly. Okay, sharpened it up to 240 grit. Starting to look prettier already. Now onto the 400. Alright, here's the 400 grit. Off to the 600 now. Now, yeah, it takes a lot longer if you haven't done this for a while or you're reprofiling an axe for the first time, but you know, like I let this get fairly I let this get fairly blunt before I actually sharpened it again, so it's kind of my fault. But otherwise you don't actually have to start at such a low grit and work your way all the way up. And normally I'd probably use some diamond stones on it, but I thought I'd show it could be done with just normal sandpaper to uh, so that anyone who doesn't want to spend hundreds of dollars on stones can get a nice sharp edge on their axe. All right, 600 grit here. As you can see, it's getting shiny. I'm going all the way up to 2000, so it'll get a lot shinier. I don't think it'll be a mirror finish, but it'll be, um, yeah, pretty close. All right, got the, if it's going to focus, got the 800 grit. Now onto the 1200. This is after 1200 grit. Starting to look quite good now. Now onto the 1500. Okay, there's 1500 grit. And now for the 2000. Interestingly, I've still got the same bit of um, double-sided tape on there. It's not as sticky, but that's kind of good because it's just sticky enough to hold it on there, but not enough that it rips the paper to shreds when you try to peel it off. So this is actually doing it this way is less hassle than I thought. Shiny. Okay, here we are, polished up to 2000 grit. It's not a perfect mirror, but it's pretty sexy looking. Um, now, if you had a fine, finer sandpaper, I can only get up to 2000 locally, um, but you can order it online. You can get it even more polished, or you can go to a stropping compound on some leather or something like that. But before that step, what you want to do, or this is how I do it anyway, is, I don't know if I can get that on camera, here we are, so with the last final grit, just raise it a little bit, and put a bit of a micro bevel on there, so you want to do it on 
both sides obviously and the idea here is it's just going to strengthen the edge just a tad especially when you've got such a wide bevel like on my one and then finish with some alternating strokes I don't know if you can make it out but yeah, probably not, I can barely see it by eye, but it's just a very fine micro bevel on there and now it's quite sharp. Now the last step is to get a piece of bare leather. You can use compound if you want but make sure it's finer than the finer sandpaper you finished on. And this is just to remove any remnants of what's left of the burr. I'm going to have to put this somewhere better, hang on. Okay, we're now somewhere better. I've just got some bare leather here. And all I'm doing is just stropping side to side. Probably do this 30 to 40 times. And this will just help get rid of any scraggly bits on the edge or bits of burr that are left. You will still have some left from the sandpaper but because it's so fine and you finish off with little, really light and alternating strokes it'll be quite small so the leather will get it off perfect. And then we'll do a cutting test. Alright, that is feeling nice and sharp. Alright, time for some tests. This is my favourite one, the shaving one. Seems to either impress people or gross people out. Let's try a bit of paper. This one I haven't done with an axe. Yeah, nice. Good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I remember there was a time when I couldn't even get a, um, a knife to cut normal printer paper, so... Alright, and I thought this one could be good. There's a little bit of a seam there on the denim, but make it a bit harder. Let's see if it'll cut this. <laughs> All right, I'm pretty happy with that. One final thing, because it hasn't been done for a while. Oh. Look at the way that goes on the wood. Is that gorgeous or what? I think it's a great practice to get into maintaining your tools, keeping them in peak condition. It's just a shame, but these days most people's axes I see, they're just sort of rotting, handles rotting away in the ground and it's the head's all rusty and there's no edge on it at all. It's alright for splitting if it's got no edge on it, but 
if you want to do other stuff all right well thanks for watching don't, don't forget to like share subscribe all that good stuff I hope you enjoyed seeing me get this nice and sharp it's my favorite hatchet and um, yeah have a good one